Hey guys, welcome in the next video. In this one we will talk about the PE ratio, which stands for price to earnings ratio. Uh, the PE ratio is probably the most used ratio when it comes to stocks. It tells us uh, very important information about the stock, probably one of the most important information. And it is how much a company makes, how much money it makes, related to its market price. So again, how much the company makes, how much money it makes, related to its market price. In other words, is the company making enough money to justify its price? That's what the PE ratio deals with. This is the formula. PE ratio is current stock price, that's the price you see if you look at the chart of that stock. So that's the P, right? That's the current price. And the E, this one stands for earnings per share. And the earnings per share, that means how much the company made after deducting all expenses, right? So it's net income minus dividend. So again, price earnings ratio is the current price of a stock slash how much the company made. Now here are two ways how you can look at it to understand it better. You can look at the PE ratio as how much you pay now to receive one dollar of a company earnings in the future, right? How much you pay now to receive one dollar of the earnings. So uh, let me give you an example. Let's say that current stock price of a company, that's the P, is 100 bucks. That's how much one stock costs right now. Now, let's say that earnings per share, how much the company makes per one share, is 20 bucks, right? So that means that the PE ratio in this case is five. So $5 is how much you pay now to receive $1 of the earnings. Right, so now you pay five bucks and in the next earnings you get one dollar. Then next year another dollar. Then next earnings another dollar and so on, right? Or uh, there's another way how you can look at the PE ratio maybe this one will be easier for you to understand. And it's how many years it will take the company to earn the money you paid for the stock. So if you look at the example, how many years it will take the company, so it's five years, right? It will take five years to make that 100 bucks you invested in it, right? So you paid a hundred bucks for the company and in five years, that's five times 20, you'll get those a hundred bucks you invested in this company, right? So that's another way how you can look at it. You can imagine it any way you like, either this way or this way. Both ways are correct, so it's all up to you. Now, obviously as an investor, what you want is low PE. The lower PE, the better. Because the lower PE, the less you pay to receive that one dollar of the earnings, right? The less time it takes to earn back that initial investment in that company. So let me give you another example. Let's say that uh, the price of a company dropped to 80 bucks. Let's say that the earnings are still the same. 
In this case, the PE is 4, which is better than 5, right? So the lower PE, the better. Now let's move on a bit. The PE is a very good indicator if a stock is overpriced or not. There are a lot of beginner investors who look just at the PE. I don't really recommend doing that. PE is not a holy grail. There are many factors that can distort the PE ratio, so the stock could look uh, very good or very bad. You always need to consider more information about the company, not just the PE. You need to consider more information to get the complete picture. So you, for example, need to look at the PB ratio. You need to look at the debt, how much in debt the company is. You need to consider the dividends or how the sector is doing overall. So those are stuff that you need to consider as well, not just the PE, right? The PE is not a holy grail, even though it's uh, very useful. It's not a thing that uh, I would recommend using as a standalone ratio or a standalone indicator. So don't analyze a stock using just PE. This is the average average PE in the S&P 500 index. Currently, it's around 16, but this is the average. There are companies and sectors which are way above it, way below it. This is just sort of a, a middle ground. Standard PE differs between sectors. And that's actually what I want to talk about right now. So let's first talk about stocks with high PE. Stocks with high PE are usually stocks or sectors that are very popular. Those are stocks from fast growing sectors. What comes to my mind as a good example is the technology sector. It's a very popular sector, it's fast growing, and stocks here are quite overpriced, I would say, and they have very high PE. So the thing is that those high PE stocks is that their prices are inflated, the stock prices are inflated, and I wouldn't have problem with that, but they would need to have earnings to back it up, right? But usually those overpriced companies don't have earnings to back it up, to back the high price up, right? So why the investors are willing to pay such high prices for so overpriced companies, if the PE is that high, they pay such amounts of money because they believe in higher earnings in the future. They believe in bright future. They believe that the company, the overpriced company, will make way more money than it's making now. That's why they are willing to pay such high prices. That's why they are willing to buy overpriced stocks with high PE. Here are some examples. Tesla or Netflix. Let me go to the Finviz screener and show you their PE. So this is the Finviz website. Let me go to Tesla first. This is Tesla, T-S-L-A, that's the ticker. And in here, this is the those are the details, the company details. PE, 163.47. That's insane. Nobody would be willing to pay such amounts of money if they wouldn't believe that the earnings would rise dramatically in the future, right? That would be just insane. Investors that are investing in Tesla believe that earnings will grow dramatically. That's why they are willing to buy Tesla for such a huge price, for such a huge PE, right? Now Tesla, that's, I would say, an extreme. Let's now have a look at the Netflix. The ticker is NFLX, that's Netflix. And currently Netflix has the PE ratio of 32.8. 
this is still very high PE ratio. Remember the average PE ratio in the S&P 500 index is 16. So this is double the number, right? So it's very high PE. Again, why are investors buying this stock? They're buying it because they believe that earnings will rise. They believe that earnings will rise dramatically to compensate for the high price they are paying for the stock right now. Right? So let me go back. Is it bad to buy a stock for high PE? It's not bad if earnings pick up in the future. But we can't be certain of this. We don't see the future. We don't know if earnings will pick up. We don't know if earnings of Netflix or Tesla will pick up in the future. That's why I recommend buying stocks that have their PE below 20, which means that they are currently not overpriced. That's way safer than buying an overpriced stock for high PE and hoping that the earnings will rise in the future. That's risky because we don't know what will happen in the future. But if there is a company that has low PE right now, then go for it. So yeah, as I was saying, PE shows the current situation. It doesn't show the future. It shows the current situation. It can change. The PE can change depending on the future price of a stock and on the future earnings of a company. Now, let's talk about stocks with low PE. Those are usually stocks that are from sectors that are currently not popular. Those stocks are usually quite stable. There are often no surprises in those companies. What comes to my mind as a good examples are stocks from the utilities sector or stocks from the basic materials sector, right? Those sectors are not very popular and those companies in those sectors are quite stable. So I think that those are good examples of sectors that have stocks with typically low PE ratio. Now, uh, if you find a stock which has extremely low PE compared to the rest of stocks in that sector, then most likely it's not a holy grail, but you've probably found a stock that investors don't believe in. It could be, for example, a company that made some money now, but in the future, investors don't really believe that the company will continue this way, making as much money as they made now, right? So if you found a stock with extremely low PE, then you should be cautious. There's probably something that you overlooked. You most likely haven't found a holy grail. If it's looking too good to be true, then it's probably not true. Now, when you are using the Finvis screener to look for stocks you could potentially invest in, I suggest that you look for stocks that have their PE below 20. I think currently, right now in year 2022, this is sort of a rule of thumb which you can use. So the stocks which are above 20 are overpriced and stocks that are below 20 are good to go. But this is just sort of a universal rule. As I was saying, all the sectors are different. There are sectors with typically high PE ratios as there are also sectors with typically low PE ratios. So if, for example, you want to invest in the technology sector, then if you look for stocks with PE below 20, then you probably won't find many and you would need to lower your criteria and look, for example, for stocks that have PE below 25, right? Not 20, but 25. But the universal rule that I currently follow and which I advise you to follow as well is look for stocks with PE below 20. Those are stocks that are not too overpriced, that are not too expensive. Now, on a final note, this is what you should keep in mind. The PE depends on a current market price. 
and on a current earnings. Both change over time. Market price changes every day and earnings are also not a constant. So keep in mind that the PE depends on both of these. And if you like a company which currently has a high PE, then what I recommend is you wait. You wait until the PE drops, ideally if it drops below 20. And this could happen in two ways. So in order for the PE to drop, let me write it down. What needs to happen is either price drops, this is what lowers the PE ratio, or earnings rise. Right? This also brings the PE ratio down. Keep that in mind as both price and earnings have effect on the PE ratio. Right? So I hope that I made it crystal clear. The PE ratio is definitely one of the most important ratios to look for. So I really hope you guys understood it well. If not, I recommend watching this video again and making sure that you understand completely what the PE tells you. So yeah, that's for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.